the hell I'm talking about this? Um, you would think that this is just a thing of the past because of course we are all grown ups now. Uh, we don't come up with stuff which doesn't work uh, with uh, uh, different uh, products. Um, well, uh, the same thing is happening right now. So if you take a look at relational databases, we established that SQL is there to save the day. Uh, what about document databases? Well, it's a mess. It's a mess because MongoDB came up with something which users started to like, developers started to like and appreciate and know and hundreds of thousands of people created content and applications and everything else to support the MongoDB ecosystem and it was open source. So it felt like it's a given that this is going to be another uh, database technology which you can build on. And as I mentioned before, in 2018, they went proprietary. So they pulled the rug from under everyone, uh, everyone who contributed, everyone who built on this thing. And they uh, basically told the world, hey, if you want to use the MongoDB query language, yes, it's very easy. Yes, even a non-developer can use it, but you will have to buy it from us. You will have to seek permission from us anytime you consider using that in your, uh, in your product. Um, they, they, they created the MongoDB query language with the same mindset as how SQL was born because the, the, the plan was that they should you know, come up with a query language which everybody could use, which is not as complicated as SQL. I mean, we are abstraction layer and abstraction layer uh, um, uh, uh, based uh, nowadays and MongoDB is a good tool to abstract the very you know, inner workings of, of a database. This was the, this was the, uh, the goal here and they, they achieved it. So this is a familiar slide, but with document databases. So if you, if you look at it now, um, <coughs> There's the MongoDB query language, and then there are a uh, lot of different implementations of the MongoDB query language across uh, a set of different products. Oracle implemented uh, MQL in uh, Oracle database. Uh, Azure Cosmos DB, they provide a MongoDB-like service um, which speaks MongoDB as well and which you can query using uh, MQL. Amazon Document DB or Huawei uh, Gauss DB, they are all here to, to try and do the same thing as what MongoDB does. But it's the exact same situation as what we had with SQL before. Well, not we, I mean, I'm too young for that, but uh, I can emphasize that uh, this must have been very similar as uh, how it was with, uh, with SQL. So, you have a lot of alternatives, of course, but you just can't move between them. It's not going to behave the same way as uh, the real MongoDB uh, database uh, behaves. And that means that you don't really have a real alternative to the, to, the, to the real thing. What is the issue with MongoDB alternatives? I'm just going to go through very quickly here. So vastly different feature set. So even though it looks like the same, you're not going to uh, find the same features across all of these implementations. Uh, different degree of compatibility. So Amazon Document DB, I think, is like 35% compatible with MongoDB, which means that if you use um, some advanced MongoDB feature and then you want to migrate to MongoDB, well, you're screwed because you will have to re-implement however you implemented that uh, feature in your application to make sure that you're not using that feature which uh, uh, document DB decided not to implement for various reasons. No chance of migration between them for, for, for uh, the uh, before mentioned reasons. All of them are proprietary. So all of these alternatives are provided by some cloud provider or Oracle, which is like everything of the above um, so it's not like you can just download it and, and use it. And the worst of it is that 
for a MongoDB alternative, MongoDB sets the pace. And what we mean by that is that each of these alternatives will need to follow what MongoDB is doing and make sure that they stay compatible. So that means is that if MongoDB comes up with some shiny new feature, each and every time they need to, um, they need to decide whether they want to uh, implement that or, or, uh, or not. So, we are in need of a new open standard. The same open standard as what saved SQL from being this very fragmented uh, vendor logged in technology, which probably uh, most of us would not know much about. Uh, we are in need of an, open of an open standard for document databases, and this is the reason why I told you about the history of SQL, and this is why I uh, talked about what is happening in the document database market uh, nowadays, it's because history repeated itself and we still don't have an open standard for something which is widely used by many in the industry. So how should a, an open standard look like? Well, in short, it should look like SQL. Um, but of course, that's a very uh, tough job. I mean, uh, SQL, since it became an open standard, I think it got refined for decades. Um, and uh, of course you can start with something perfect. So the first step would be to, to agree on a standardized core feature set based on what MongoDB was doing so far. A JSON query language which resembles or is the same as how MongoDB uh, operates. And of course, if someone wants to do something more, that's fine. You can extend the, 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 uh, the standard, um, but the core features sh set should be the same as it is in the case of uh, SQL. And since we became public with our intention to provide an open source alternative to MongoDB uh, with FerretDB, we just received an overwhelming amount of interest from vendors, from some of the companies I mentioned on the previous slides, where they want to come together and want to agree on an open standard, and this is what we are pushing uh, for as well. And <clears throat> I promise that this is not going to be the commercial break, uh, but I wanted to talk about FerretDB, and I wanted to talk about what we do and how FerretDB fits into this whole um, um, story I just uh, talked to you about. So uh, we founded FerretDB in 2021, and the reason we did that is because I'm sure you heard about Terraform, about HashiCorp's decision to, um, to uh, bring uh, Terraform uh, into proprietary, but that's no longer open source uh, either. And uh, it got forked immediately. We have open tofu now. That's open source Terraform, and that's great. With MongoDB, that did not happen because there was no community around it. There was no um, willingness to fork uh, MongoDB and, and continue where MongoDB Inc. left off. So we kind of waited uh, three years, and we founded FerretDB in 2021, around um, mid-2021. The reason we were interested is because all of us worked at Percona, which is an open source consulting uh, company, and we feel very strongly about open source databases. So it was founded by Alexei Palaschenko, Peter Zaitsev, and, uh, and uh, myself. And the reason we started uh, implementing uh, the product is because we talked to users we wanted to make sure that it's not just us who's interested in this. We wanted to make sure that this is a real problem, and indeed it was. There are some quotes here uh, which, uh, which uh, we uh, got from, from large companies who were trying to get out of the vendor lock-in situation uh, with, uh, with MongoDB. So we started working on FerretDB, and FerretDB is really a MongoDB compatibility layer. So we decided to build a MongoDB alternative on top of Postgres and later on SQLite because we think that it can be done. 
So um, if you took a look at the existing alternatives with cloud providers, we suspect that they pretty much did the same. No one took the original MongoDB code, no one did uh, uh, um, uh, anything from scratch. Uh, we all build on some relational database. In our case, it's, uh, it's Postgres. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone knows we are Apache 2.0. You can just download it, play with it. The same thing as what you could do with MongoDB back then, but of course more since they were uh, GPL and we are Apache 2.0 should be usable uh, on-prem or in the cloud, and we really want to be the first implementation of the open standard for uh, the MongoDB query language. So what does MongoDB compatibility mean? Uh, I want to stop here and uh, talk a bit about that because it's uh, often a question, what does MongoDB compatibility mean? MongoDB compatibility very clearly means that the existing elements of the MongoDB ecosystem should be usable with it. So that means if you have your favorite UI and you want to um, uh, use that to manage your document database, you can just use MongoDB Compass to manage FerretDB because uh, there's no difference in the behavior and that means that you can keep all your tools and not have to uh, learn anything uh, new. Some um, <coughs> some uh, uh, details on how this looks like in practice. So as you can see on the first chart, this is how MongoDB looks like nowadays. In order for you to use MongoDB, you need a MongoDB driver, which is often part of your software. You have that MongoDB driver to connect to the MongoDB API, and the MongoDB API layer uh, talks to the MongoDB database engine. And I mentioned before that the real strength of MongoDB is developer experience. It's ma it makes things easy. But what makes things easy for the developer are the drivers. That's still Apache 2.0. That's impossible to change because MongoDB would lose a lot of users the moment they would consider changing the license of the drivers. So that means that the drivers themselves are still free software. It's the exact reason why MongoDB is popular. And we can just take that. And if you look at the second chart here, with the MongoDB drivers, with FerretDB talking to the MongoDB drivers, and with FerretDB storing data, in Postgres as the database engine, we bring MongoDB back to open source under uh, the Apache and, uh, and, uh, and the Postgres license. So this is the point of what we are doing and this is how it looks like from the bird's eye, uh, bird's eye view. Why Postgres? Because Postgres is insanely popular because uh, there's a huge number of uh, um, developers who prefer uh, Postgres. It's, uh, it offers existing JSON compatibility, so we could uh, uh, implement a document database on, on top of that. And of course, if you run Postgres today, you can just put FerretDB on top of it and have MongoDB. Uh, either as a service or as, as, uh, as an internal uh, part of your inf infrastructure. And uh, so for that reason, as some of these logos uh, um, um, may be uh, very um, um, familiar to you. So all of these Postgres uh, or Postgres compatible services can utilize FerretDB to turn them into a MongoDB compatible database. So you don't really have to do much. You just take um, Yugabyte or CockroachDB or whatever else, and uh, in theory, you would uh, end up with a MongoDB compatible database uh, while using FerretDB with it. We are not just Postgres. So Postgres is our database of focus, of course, but we also have SQLite. It's actually, uh, apologies, uh, for the outdated slide here, so SQLite is also in production. 
so SQLite and Postgres are both available as a storage engine for FaradDB. And SAP also decided to contribute to FaradDB, so they built SAP HANA compatibility for FaradDB. And of course, if you have your own product and you want to make it MongoDB compatible, uh, you can do that using uh, FaradDB because you can just contribute a handler to it. Performance concerns, so is this even possible? Um, we think that it's possible to meet uh, MongoDB uh, performance levels with this, uh, with this solution. Um, many uh, around us from the Postgres community uh, managed to run uh, benchmarks. Okay, I touched it again. But uh, just to keep the flow, um, <coughs> okay. Yeah, so many, many think that uh, the same uh, performance can be achieved with, uh, with Postgres as the storage engine compared to MongoDB. Right now, uh, there are some benchmarks here. As you can see, Amazon DocumentDB and FerretDB are about half as performant as MongoDB Atlas. So this is the reality here. Some use cases, of course, would, uh, would uh, not be happy with this performance, but uh, some others just don't care. Uh, so if you're not performance heavy, if your application is not, uh, is not dependent on milliseconds, then uh, you should be actually okay with uh, running FaradDB in production. So current progress, we have users, we have a steady stream of outside contributors, we have more than seven, 0.5k uh, stars, uh, more than two, 300 forks, uh, and uh, we are onboarding real world users like uh, makers of network appliances who were running uh, uh, MongoDB um, uh, internally in their appliances, JavaScript frameworks, and uh, applications with a lighter use of, uh, of MongoDB. And we are becoming uh, available on many of these um, cloud service providers right now, FaradDB is available on Civo and, uh, and Scaleway uh, as a service, so if you want to try it out, you, you don't have to install anything. So the conclusion here, um, so we think that there is a need for an open standard for the MongoDB query language. We think that it should be turned into this universal tool, the same as what SQL uh, is. Uh, we think that MongoDB is going to become the same, become the same kind of com commod commodity uh, like SQL is, and, um, and uh, FaradDB wants to be the first implementation of the open standard which uh, vendors can uh, agree on. Um, we built FaradDB in the open, so if you take a look at our GitHub uh, repo, you can find all the code, all the issues, our roadmap, and everything else, what comes with it. So feel free to take a look, provide us feedback, try it out. Uh, we are more than happy to, to, um, to talk. We also have the document database community, which was started by FaradDB, but it's actually a platform where you can talk about uh, the document database market in general. So if you have a talk uh, uh, which is related to document databases, if you're a vendor in the, uh, in the document database area, then uh, you are free to submit a talk. It's so independent from FaradDB that if your idea for a talk is that FaradDB is the worst idea you've ever encountered, if you bring arguments, go for it. So we, we really want uh, the discussion to be impartial. So this is documentdatabase.org. Uh, and finally, as I mentioned, there are two uh, service providers. Civo uh, at try.ferretdb.io provides uh, to our uh, opportunity to just uh, try FerretDB. And if you're looking for something which persists, then you can use Scaleway or you can just download it and, uh, and uh, try it out locally. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope that uh, I could make the case uh, for you here to consider uh, joining us in this movement where we want to see a better future for document databases. 
And if you have any questions, I'm uh, open to answering them. <laughs>